Bumps and bruises, scratches and scrapes, some of the ingredients that a good life makes. But sorrows become success. And as we aim for the top, we will pause if we must, but we will never stop. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Hello and welcome to Simso Sessions, the safe space to share your stories. Tonight we follow up with a season five guest who found herself in the greatest challenge and test of her life when she was involved in a car accident that ended in the loss of a precious life. And after years of anxious waiting, Savannah has had her final day in court. She's still processing that while also navigating the court of public opinion. Tonight she's sharing what life has been like since that day in November of last year when she had her final hearing and what has kept her going in this new chapter and this new dispensation. Before we do that, though, we're checking in with a special guest from last season. Bishop Dr. Carla Dunbar joins us via Zoom. Hi there, Bishop Doctor. How are you? I am well. Don't I look well? <laughs> Should I look deeply I into your eyes that. and ask you, how are you? <laughs> You are well. Look into my eyes and ask me, how am I? <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. I'm well. I'm, I'm still going through some stuff with, um, relating to my illnesses. But I am giving God thanks. It's always just God again, proving himself that he's able. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the show and your experience here. I mean, we all knew you were a firebrand from before you sat in this chair. Uh, I think people... Um, got even more insight who knew knew some people never knew know them know um, what was the reaction um like post show post show my reaction um is what i expected it to be i knew the show would be life altering for the persons who would watch it and that is the reason as i told you sim why i did the show even though I wasn't well. I knew it would touch lives. I knew it would alter and affect destinies. Just before I came on just now, a client that was before me in office was relating to the show again. Oh, and I God. said to her, you know, I'm about to go on right after you leave the office. And she said, yes, so people are still even now talking about the impact on the show, on them and the people who are going through illnesses are also getting a sense of hope because of how I have weathered my own storms with my illnesses and they can't believe that. You know, they would say, um, somebody told me the other day, you don't look like what you're going through. And I said, that is true. Ah, and, and you know, that's the essence of this show is that many of us do not look like what we're going through. No. And that's why you have to no. be kind to people because you don't know what, what struggles people are facing. You never know. I, I'm curious about the reaction from your Christian community. I was going through some of the comments in social and, you know, it, it, it hurts my heart every time. But there are some people who couldn't even hear the wisdom in what you were saying because they couldn't yeah. get past the color of your hair. I know. Oh, what you had on. And I was like, my God, does Doc have to face this like every day? Yes, I do. I'm I'm forever, I believe, a controversial figure. Um, my dress code, how I speak, um, my affinity to sexual related topics and stuff like that. I'm forever seen by a Christian Christian community, by a part of the Christian community. I will not say everybody but by a part of the Christian community who really doesn't understand the play, that there's a place for my gifting and that my gifting really comes from God. And so not having the wisdom and the understanding to embrace that, then they mitigate against it because they think it is so unlike what it is supposed to be. Right. So yes, that still happens. 
where I, I don't defend myself. I believe if you're right, you don't need a defense. And if you're wrong, you don't have one. And because I know that I'm walking in the will of the Lord, so I no longer defend. I try to be understanding, though, of the people that I still believe do not yet understand the gifting. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a curious gifting, but it's obviously very special. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. How is ministry going? How is your gym going? Um, uh, how is your outreach going? The ministry is going well. The ministry is still reaching persons, uh, reaching families, and that is the that's the the whole crux of the matter. Is that we are here to say marriage is built to last. It must last. It's going to stay um, for those who are going through the rut. So we are able, you know, to navigate them, to help them to go through it and to come out better on the other side. The outreaches are also um, doing well. We can still use some more support, but we are trusting God because once he wills it, he builds it. And even though, I mean, I was away for two months, I just got back, um, but I had a, uh, a good cadre of ministers who are here holding the fort, including my own daughter, who is one of the ministers here. So, and they understand the vision. The vision is families, the vision is marriage. And so we are carrying that out to the fullest extent. Right. Grow your marriage, which is what I meant. Grow your marriage. I said ministry. your gym, because that's the acronym. So we have the, we have the, the so that happens on a fort Sunday evening. People come from across the island and be here for that date evening. It's free. Refreshments and everything is provided. And then we have the academy. The Grow Your Marriage Academy online where people can actually access the courses yeah. that will help you to grow in your marriage or grow in your singleness. Okay. Love this. Once he wills it, he builds it. I love yes. that. I'm going to steal that, yes. Bishop Dr. Yes. Dunbar. Can I have it? Once he yes. wills it, he builds it. And so sure. um, it. As, you sit, as you sit there, you are going through, you had a stroke before you came on the show. You're having some other challenges, and you have been for the last couple of years. I had a heart attack years. in June. <laughs> and you had a heart attack in June? Yes, and a whole heap of diagnosis about my kidneys, livers, etc. Currently, yeah, I'm battling a severe coronary and diverticulitis, glasses. And so I'm having some extreme pains now. But like I say, if God take me through it, he will take me through it. That's what, what he wills it, builds it. He will not have allowed me to become a sex therapist in Christendom and not equip me. Once he wills it, he builds it. Once he takes you to something, you can be sure he's going to take you through it. He doesn't leave you halfway, and he's a very present help. Oh, gosh. That's my word I'm taking away. Once he wills it, yeah. he builds it. If he, he take builds it, it. if he takes you to it, he will take you through it. Through it, yes. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Thank you very much, Doc. Appreciate amen. you checking in with us, following up to let us know how you're doing. We wish you all the best, and I will check in with you because you know, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank Let's you, Bishop Dr. Right. Carla Dunbar, checking in with us. After the break, our sit down with Savannah. We're checking in with her after this. All right. If you could help me, that would be great because I'm, I'm having a bit of a post-gym um, apocalyptic. You see how God, you see how God goes? Jesus, the old lady get up. Yes. <laughs> All right. Welcome back, everybody. I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. From the bottom of my heart, I'm grateful to have Savannah back with us tonight. Um, we know this is a challenging time for her and she's still dealing with a lot and it takes a lot to sit in this chair, guys. It takes a lot to sit in this chair and she's agreed to be with us um, today and I, I welcome you and I embrace you with all of the emotions that you feel sitting in that chair. Um, but I remind you that this is a... Thank you, Bishop. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's start high level with how you're doing. Um, we know you had your final hearing in November, November of last year. 
Last year. Yeah. Does it feel like it was not that far away? It's almost a year, say, ish. Yeah. <laughs> Does yeah. it feel like it? Um, I don't know. I don't know if time feels very. Uh, like know. it hasn't really moved. Yeah, because you. I don't know. I don't have the words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's go back a little bit to the first time you sat in a chair. Yeah. <clears throat> Many people have been asking you to sit and talk about this for a long time. Yeah. You didn't want to say anything. No, because I don't... There had already been a great amount of sensationalism around the topic. And then, you know, it's no secret that the media don't really care about you as a person. They just want to sell some clicks. So I definitely didn't want to sit with anybody or even have an interview or talk to the paper. Um without understanding that it would be treated with reverence because obviously I'm not, you know, I, many people have been affected by this tragedy. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. And so you decided to come here and sit and speak about it because you said like you thought the time had come yeah, for you to finally say something. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, um, I mean, I know Rush Graham and I, and I had seen him on your show. And I really, you know what I mean? Like I, I, there's a certain amount of me thinking that, okay, he trusts her. <laughs> and then, so maybe I could take that step and, you I'm know. I'm glad you did. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely grateful that I spoke to you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm honored that you, else. that you came here. And I'm happy to hear you say that <clears throat> outside of the show, you weren't sure what to expect no. when you went outside. But no. that you actually realized out of the show that there are people who feel for you and even support you. Yeah. No, I, I definitely didn't come into it with any expectations because obviously when something like this happens, right, um, you're part of an accident. You have an accident and somebody, because of it, somebody is no longer with us. Right. That person is no longer with us. It's... You, I don't expect a lot of, oh, poor, you know what I mean? Because it's, I'm not the focus, and how, how could I be? Um, and so, yeah, when I, you know, when we did the day again, we did the Amars or something like that, and, <laughs> and one of the workers was like, oh, Savannah, you want to hear you by your voice? Okay, hold, hold, hang on in there. And I was like, wow, that's, mm -hmm. that's, really, mm -hmm. that's really thoughtful that they could extend that kind of compassion to me. Grace. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, how are you extending that compassion to yourself? That's a good question. Um, I think uh, I think right now what I'm focused on is I'm focused on therapy. So I have I found a really good therapist. Glory be to God, and um, I am taking the time to be really gentle with myself not rush into things. You know, last year after your interview and like in between everything happening, I released a song and I, because the, the, the instinct is to keep doing the thing that you know. Yeah. The thing that you're familiar with. Yeah. And there is definitely in the sphere of music and entertainment, you don't want to feel like you're falling behind. Right. Um, and so I definitely felt that pressure, but that's a difference today where I, I'm not going to push myself and do something when I'm not ready to sit with press, to give interviews, to answer anybody, to be even so visible mm -hmm. in the public. Mm -hmm. So I want to explore that some more, you know, because you've been wrestling with a lot. And I think at one point in your life, at one point recently enough, it forced you into what I would even call hiding. You call it isolation. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But sitting in this chair, when you sat with us the last time, I asked you if coming out of that interview, if it felt freeing for you. And you said no. <laughs> what it did, in fact, was make the situation so much more real. Yes. I felt very naked. And yeah. I feel very naked right now. You feel naked now? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. You it's know. hard for you to be here today. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, like I, I called you and I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Um, just because 
you know what it is? I don't want to lament around this and I want to give it the respect and reverence it needs. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want it to be, oh, here she goes again, talking about the same thing, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, so I'm just... you do know there are people who love you. I and definitely support know. you. I definitely know that, you know. Um, who I've want never... to know that you're, that you're okay. Yeah. Um, who acknowledge and understand that this is a terrible thing to have happened. Yeah. But who understand what the word accident means. Yeah. Right? And who know that this is a really bad situation that could have befallen. It's not, I mean, all of us at some point are at risk of something happening. Um, yeah. It's unfortunate that you're here, but having been here, I guess the question is what happens next? Sometimes we don't have the answer. Yeah. We just need to know how day by day goes. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time between sitting in, sitting in this chair last year up to November of the final hearing, you say, was a blur? Yeah. You don't remember a lot of it, say? No, no. Um, and I, um, through, this, through the work that I'm doing um, in therapy in particular, and just different hard conversations that I've been having mm -hmm. with friends, mm -hmm. because, you know, I just realized that I was dissociated for most of it. There's a thing that happened when you just go on autopilot, so the settings are already in place because so your, your body and your brain is familiar with, you know, how to go record a song, for example. So you just show up, you record the song, but you're not necessarily, it's like you're behind a film yeah, or like a glass. Yeah. yeah watching your own life. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a dissociation that was happening for sure. Sleeplessness. Yeah. Insomnia yeah. for sure. Even though, you mm. know, um... I just, yeah, I can't imagine how just a day by day. has been impacted. It's just a day by day. All right, we're yeah. going to come back more with self. Give us some time to collect ourselves. Just relax, and we'll come back with more. Soon come. Savannah is back, everybody, graciously checking in uh, with us um, to kind of update us on how she's been doing um, since her final hearing in November of last year. Um, so, you, so the day of your sentencing, we spoke earlier, you said you went home and you essentially kind of locked yourself away, isolated yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, Obviously, I'm, I'm not going to go into the, the hearing and the details and so on. But just coming away from that, again, I asked you, because you and I had been speaking in the lead up, up to, the, to the hearing. Yeah. And a big part of the angst for you was the not knowing what was going to happen. Yeah. On that day, you knew what was going to happen. You were handed a, a, a charge. You were given a fine. And I said to you, okay, so you, you knew what was to happen in that arena. Did that help you with any level of finality? No. Absolutely not. No, because again, you have an accident and a life is lost, mm -hmm. right? That is the only thing that I could think about, right? Um, I, there was no sense of relief. It was a sense of this is real and this is like, this this thing that has happened, this hearing that has happened, is acknowledging that this thing is, you know, it it it's a, this is real life. Mm -hmm. This is my real life too, you know. So to kind of reconcile the two things was difficult. It being me, my real life. This is happen. This has happened. Yeah. Um, and I don't. I wouldn't say it gets easier either, you know, um, confronting that and con confronting yourself too, um, you know, because obviously there are many feelings around it oh. from many people. And um, yeah. The interesting, so, you told me, you know, the day in court, obviously everybody would have been distraught yourself included, and there are people who are saying to you, why are you crying? 
Yeah. Like, why are you crying? You got a sentence to charge in a bad, the this in a bad. It's like nobody expects you to be remorseful. It's like there, there are people who don't think you feel anything out of this, and that could not be further than the truth. Yeah, and I um, I'm not sure. I I couldn't predict why people would feel like that. Um, I I do know that as a public facing person, people tend to see you as a kind of figurine, you know, kind of unfeeling, unmoving. She dressed up pretty and she got perform. You know what I mean. And then two, they may see like a post somewhere where I'm smiling. Mm -hmm. And um, I think they're just like, see, this thing hasn't impacted her. Mm -hmm. She stood up on, you know, Instagram, I smiled. She, we saw her hair, right? Not understanding that, you know, you're wrestling with yourself at all times. And the, the fight to be present, the fight to give yourself the grace, to give yourself the compassion, to show up for you, to continue going is the hardest thing. You posted something on social media and the comments showed you, one in particular, um, somebody called you a murderer. Yeah. Um, and that just kind of made you recoil and go right back into yourself. Yeah. Um, so now I guess a part of your, the new dispensation is kind of how you show up, uh, uh, my God, how you live and show up without making anybody feel like you are, you know, flippant yeah. about the situation. That has to be a very delicate balance and a it's very tight, tight rope. It's an impossible balance, mm. you know. Um, I think that, and again, this isn't to go around or discredit anyone else's perspective. You see what I'm saying? I can understand that from the outside looking in, it looks it might look one way to you. Um, I would just say that you know this is this has been a very real experience for me, and it's not it's not something that's light at all. And I am fighting to be present, and so you know, with me going out, that was my first time going out. You just since I've been here in Jamaica and and it was again like my friend was just like oh because she'd been begging me for for a while mm -hmm. to see me anyway and she was like oh I have these things come and have some fun and relax man and whatever and I managed to unwind a bit and I did free up and I did and I felt good I felt a sense of joy and it was just like wow you can still feel these things and I I was I was kind of I'm not telling no lie, but I was kind of excited to share it still mm -hmm. I was like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then posting wasn't something that I was doing regularly anyway. So it was just like, oh, let me come back with like a bright moment. But, you know. Um, yeah, I asked you about, about that, Sev, and how you move forward with that because um, the truth is that you have to go on living your life, but you also have to be so conscious, not of, you know, people who don't matter, but of people who do. Absolutely. If you know what I mean. Yeah. And you said to me, Sim, when I saw the comments on the post, I understood. Yeah. I got it. Because you can see, and you have been trying to see from the other perspective, yeah. how it is that you have to navigate so carefully because of all who are involved. Yeah. It really is impossible. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine that if it were my relative. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, yeah. I don't know how I would move toward forgiving somebody for that yeah you know what i mean even as much as it being an accident i don't know if that would um help yeah because they're just no longer there yes um so i yeah i contend with that i have yeah. to contend with it and it's not it's definitely something that is present in my heart yeah you said it you said sim i get it yeah i get it i do she gets it all right more with seven on the other side so come.
Welcome back to the show, everybody. We're back with uh, Sev. When you were here the last time and in our post discussions, we talked a lot about um, therapy. Yeah. I'm so glad that's playing a, a role in your life now. Yeah. What was the catalyst that pushed you to that point where you said, okay, let me actually try it. Let me do this. Yeah. I, you know what it is? I was trying to find a therapist in last year and I kept, I, it felt like I kept hitting a wall because as much as people say, oh, go therapy, go therapy, go therapy, you, you don't end up finding your right therapist immediately sometimes. And the right fit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I needed somebody who would be able to kind of understand that, like, you know, I am, um, I don't know, just the many... The, Nuances. The, yeah, mm -hmm. public facing. Mm -hmm. I've had this sort of childhood trauma. This is what I'm currently experiencing. This is what I'd like my life to look like. This is how I would like to navigate things. This is where I want to be. This is how I want to feel. This is the person that I believe myself to be, and I feel very far from that. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it took a while, but I ended up finding a really good therapist. Um, and I kind of love her still. <laughs> you know, I didn't I tell her that. I kind of love her. <laughs> she yeah. kind of loves you, therapist. And, and what has that process done for you in the couple months that you've been doing it you know what the, you know what she has reassured me that there is 100 percent a way forward you know which sometimes when you're as much as you have the support of family and friends which i'm so grateful for it is a very lonely experience because it didn't you know what i'm saying i i was a person that yeah was involved it happened to um, them yeah yes right and so kind of hearing from a professional mm -hmm. who is not biased. <laughs> it's just like, you know what? Yeah, we can, we, there are tools to help you move through this. Yeah. Um, has been really reassuring to me. Yeah. Um, you were at a place you said where you, f you forgot who you were. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get, I don't want to get to, I don't want to, you understand? But I don't you want to lament on how, Sev, no, Sev, it's been, but Sev, this is, I want you to understand that this is your, this is your story to own. Yeah. Right. This is your story to own, my love. How it happened, what happened, all of it. Um, and I think, and you and I spoke about this, that there is a feeling inside you that you can't speak to it too much because you perhaps look at it like I was the least affected so I don't have the right. Am I right? You feel like you should? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. again, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm able to. You're still here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing you right now, like I'm, I'm still on earth. So it's just a sense of like this, like, you know what I mean? Even with coming to speak to you again I was like oh my god this thing again and I don't want people to think those most affected to think that you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. it's the, the spotlight is here mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. I yeah just there's a definitely a sense of I, I don't feel necessarily that I have any sort of entitlement to sharing what has happened with me or what has been happening because others were so much more impacted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sounds like survivor's guilt to me. Has your therapist ever mentioned that term to you? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> All right, we don't have to go down that road, but yeah. I hear what you're saying, and believe me, I, I, I get it too. Um, you, you, you've, you say you're in a phase of your life now where you're trying to yeah to re-emerge yes and and that was literally prompted by a conversation you had with a friend of yours yes um with natalie yeah um when you were at your lowest natalie is like god sent her no genuinely um she kind of called me onto the blue still because my friendships have suffered you've lost a lot of people yes and you've pushed some away i've pushed everyone away right after um, I just didn't, I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want nobody said no, nothing made me feel better in that time. And I just felt, yeah, but I just feel like say I did, I deserve to just be alone. And mm -hmm. yeah, I did push people away and 
you know, some of those friendships now are, are in recovery. God. Um, so I'm grateful for that. But what did Natalie say to you? You said it was like an oasis in the desert. Yeah, I did say that to you while you remember. Um, yeah, so I had been offered an opportunity, right? So I was, I was doing this work. I was showing up every day and very long days on this project. And then I would just go back to where I was staying and fall apart and the, you know, breaking down, crying, all the rest of it you know how, how whatever that looks like and yeah she 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 called me out of the blue and she was just like have you looked at your life and how far you've come you have beat and is it I, this is just me paraphrasing yeah, she said it much fine. better than yeah. i could have <laughs> lyricist yeah. yeah um she was just like yeah look at your life and how far you've come you've beat so many odds like you're not supposed to be yeah you're not supposed to but I, like <coughs> you're not supposed to be here you're not supposed to have the platform you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. not necessarily just because your the circumstances weren't set up for that so i don't yeah something like that she said mm -hmm. but it, it was really just reassuring she she said i believe in you you know what I mean? Um, and it was like a reset. Yeah. Yeah. It was so crucial because I felt like I had locked myself away in a dark room. Um, and she kind of just came in through the door. And turned that. on a switch. And turned on like a switch, yeah. God bless her. God bless you, Natalie. And I'm not talking too much in metaphors, but. No. We get you. We get you. The yeah. audience is smart. Yeah. And I'm not so bad either. All right. Um, so we're sending some love you way as always. Go ahead, Lori, with your good vibes. If there was a word that I would use to describe Anna in all of this, it would be resilient. Resilient in that she has bent in order to get through days that are more difficult than we could ever possibly imagine. But the fact that she has never broken, she has remained graceful in the face of trials that we couldn't even begin to quantify and so we are as the people who love her happy to have her on the other side of all of this and we really want for her for this this new journey this next step for her for it to be filled with love and light and laughter and just the simple pleasures of life because she is deserving. She really is deserving of a simple but happy life. You know, we love you. And regardless of what happens, we'll always be there for you. I am so, so proud of my sister. Um, she has taken all the curveballs you know that life has thrown and she has dealt with everything with such grace you know um she is one of the most generous thoughtful considerate um sincere and ambitious persons that i know i'm not just saying this because she's actually my sister but that speaks you know volumes to who she is as a person um, she's ever present you can call on her for at any time of the day she's always there she has a listening ear um, I'm really inspired by her as well though she's younger I do look up to her um, and I have learned a lot from her as well um, I'm excited to see what the future holds and what great things she will continue to do. Um, I love you. Your niece and nephew love you loads as well. We're excited to see where life takes you on the next chapter. I just want to say how proud am I of you and who you are and who you are becoming. I know this is 
not the end for you and the road may be rocky at times but i know that you know you always put the best foot forward and i love that about you also very much you know they always say that life doesn't come with a manual and it's us to figure it out and you're doing it you're doing it you know you're coming out and showing out and doing the most and just continue to be great you are forced to be reckoned with and i wish you nothing but the best i love you very much and yeah looking forward to see what you have for us next so i just wanted to time out to you express my appreciation for have a person who love you and care about you in know, your immediate circle is me call them thing the important uh, essential to anybody at all but as i reflect and i see how privileged I'm blessed maybe if you have a person like you in you know, my family, is me. It might look like so them things didn't really get highlighted in the modern society, but as I reassure you say, we never have to so fortunate, is me. And all the negativity so much in other places yeah, still I do the right thing. Is me. So continue the right thing, keep focus said way. Somebody love you. Not only me, but people out there love you. So let's continue the right thing. The most aggro reap for your soul. Yes, me. Believe me. Alright. There's one more person who wants to send some love to you. Oh my gosh. Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> you don't come on TV. No, I, I do it only for you. Who? Who is that? So this is Seb's friend Natalie. You alone. Was telling you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Natalie does not do TV. Absolutely not. No, she doesn't even. She doesn't even have a social media. Deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> Thank you for being honest about that. I am. I am. I am. Um, but it tells me Thank loads you. about wow. how you feel. Wow. I know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. For you. Absolutely. Tell her what she needs to hear. What do you need to hear? Who is this? Who is this lady sitting here <laughs> on this show? This is not Seb. Who is this? This is yeah. This no, is this is not Seb. A version of Seb, I guess. No, we're not doing this version of Seb anymore. We talked about this. Yeah. We're not doing this. I don't this this person <laughs> who was on here today, this is this is not the lady I know. This is not the person I love. This is not the person who is amazing and phenomenal and out there and doing all of these amazing, wonderful things. <gasps> she's she's working through her stuff. Come back to us. Oh. Come back to us. Yeah. And we want, we want the real Seb. We yeah. want all of you, all of the time. Yeah. You should be all of yourself all of the time. You deserve that. You've earned it. I'm trying. You've done so much work. You've worked so hard. You wake up every day and work. Yeah. You deserve to be all of yourself all of the time, whatever that looks like. And that should start yesterday, right now. Right now. Right this second. <laughs> no, um, I, I definitely hear you for sure, you know, and that's, that's the goal. Um, and I think until I'm fully, fully there, I think I'm okay with experiencing flashes of it, at least. Oh, Seb. Yeah. You're here. You're here. Yeah. You can go over there and I see Agent to go over there. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You can go over there. This is a no man. I'll take my chair. No, but for real. But that's why she has people like you because she obviously just, she needs that hand to be able to. This is not sad. No. No, this is not sad. No, this is not sad. But you Yes. This specific thing where we are, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I, I completely get how difficult it is to navigate, like as a public figure, mm -hmm. figuring out when to talk about something and when not to talk about something. But I think what people don't appreciate is that outside of her being a public figure, she's a person. She's on here processing her trauma in public for the world. Like she's here having to explain her feelings on something that is the most tragic thing that has ever had to happen to her. And 
That was an accident. That was an accident. That was an accident. But that is something that she's still going through. And it's, I think... And that people will always judge her for. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. but her life needs to go on. But, I mean, I think anybody out there who has gone through something difficult or traumatic, whether they've lost someone or something has happened to them, I think they can maybe remember how confusing and how difficult and how impossible the situation is to navigate and then what that feels like doing it in person, but mm. she's here doing it in front of the public. <laughs> she's, she's in her peaks and in her valleys and she's up and she's down and she's like completely raw and vulnerable in front of the world. Yeah. And that is yeah. an impossible thing. And, and, she, and for me, what that lets other people who are going through stuff know is that it's okay to feel through it. Yeah. But one day, one day, if you just hang in there and do the work, you'll yeah. get to a place where it keep, levels up. Keep going. Yes, yeah. miss. Okay. Yeah, no, I've, I've definitely ha I definitely haven't always felt like that, but um, I think that's one of the things that I have to kind of hold on to one of the themes I guess that we just have to just acknowledge keep going you just have to continue you, can, you have been can't give up yeah. you have been where well, you're going you're yeah. doing it you're here right now and I'm this here is right now this is a really hard thing to come and hear and talk about this I know yet again <laughs> <laughs> yes again here we are oh again. my god but you, you did it again and you I showed up for again. sure I never exp I never if you hadn't hadn't come <laughs> I wouldn't feel no way because I know you stay and even have you didn't even take a picture. Thank you I for really coming. I yeah. mean only for her. I knew that, that this would be really important for you. Oh. Okay, guys. <laughs> Come back. Oh. Oh God. I hate this. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> On a whole TV show. That's insane. Oh. Can you imagine? Did you even know she was bad? Did you know she was bad? No, I never know. All right, we're wrapping with Sev. Um, that was nice of Natalie to come here. No, she definitely, she doesn't even take pictures. Yeah. Genuinely. Right. So I know that, cause she, you know, she has her own um, trials that she struggles with. So it's just to have her hair and do that for me. That so how she, made, she, she made you made a promise during the break. She says, if I can show up for you here, then you need to start showing up for yourself. Yes. So that's a challenge and that she's she's issued to you. She, yeah, well, then I'm not to leave for you. This yeah. is one thing she will challenge me. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I appreciate it and I understand mostly, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, there are just some days that are better than others. Of course, yeah. and will be. I asked you how you've managed to stay upright to all of this and you said it's God alone. Genu genuinely, I mean, um, if I was ever having doubts about God, it's I guess not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've I think I've I've been able to fall apart um, in prayer in a way that I just have not been able to do anywhere else. Genuinely, so I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God. Grateful for God because that's the only only reason I'm I'm choosing to still be here and to keep going, mm -hmm. really. And obviously a few of my friends and everybody who loves me and my brother, um, Your brother. David. How is he doing? He's doing all right. Good. He's my favorite person. Good. I love him so much. Good. Um, we talked a little bit about the, the aim of this show. <clears throat> and I told you that, you know, we're not here to try to, we just, we just want to talk to you about how you've been. Yeah. We're not here to change anybody's mind. Yeah. Because the truth is that some people will show you grace and compassion. Some people will be rattled by the fact that you're here. Yeah. Some people will hear you speak and hear your heart. Other people don't want to hear anything you have to say. Yeah. And and so that kind of has to be the approach for how you move forward in your life. But you but you have to live, so. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know what I mean? Like I'm I'm choosing to do that. I'm choosing to do that. And that's that in itself, I think, is a victory, yeah. you know? And so I'll just, I'll continue. I mean, I've started saying yes to shows. Like this year, I've had, what, like three compared to last year, where it was, I think, one. Mm -hmm. And the year before where I just said no to everybody. So, or to most people, I think I did have, anyway. But yeah, I'm, I'm, You're sticking I'm really in there. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm committed to it. And 
this must mean I'm going to make this mean something, you know? Um, yeah, it has to so be much. that I have been shown the breadth and width of all of these feelings and experiences to then share with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. why not? Thank you for showing up in a most authentic and real and raw way. Yeah. And may I just say, um, from this chair, that speaking to Sev about what she's going through, um, I also want to send a lot of love um, to the folks who have been affected by this, to the family who has lost um, a beautiful soul, um, to everybody who has been hurt. It's a tough situation. Um, and I can't imagine, I cannot imagine. Yeah. Um, and by speaking to her here today, it in no way, um, you know, means we don't understand or I don't understand. I cannot even begin to understand. Yeah. So we send love to you and prayers for you. Um, Only and love. all involved for healing for everybody. Yeah. Only love. All my love. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my darling. Affirmation time. I want to say, but there, but for the grace of God, go all of us, you know. And that's all I'm going to say on that. None of us are ever really prepared for grief in our lives. It's a lot of pain. Um, so many lives affected, especially when lives are lost. And the gutting reality that there is nothing, absolutely nothing you can do to change the situation or bring anybody back, no matter what the circumstances. But especially when there's unimaginable tragedy. It's tough when man judges and determines your fate. But our consolation is in the fact that only God is the final arbiter and also our greatest source of comfort. So acceptance, my friend, is the only way forward. Acceptance and forgiveness of yourself, especially, even if others can't give it. Understanding that people process pain and grief in their own way, and that is their right. But you are your responsibility. And giving up, it's not an option. You gotta push. You must persist. For what is your choice? God sees. He knows all. His is the final court. He has a final say. Circumstances will never change. But with time and intention, things can and will get better. For all involved, it is a process. But that is my prayer for every single one of us tonight. We are affirming, even as I live, I will leave all God's plans for my life. That is our soul food and our show for this evening. Thank you for watching, everybody. We're back next week with another story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, every blessing. And please remember to count your blessings.